Well, howdy guys, this is Corecat13, I'm a woman with a deep voice, and I have now played the Thousand Year Door remake. Also, Discord keeps firing up, get used to that. If you, you've been a member of this channel for God knows how long, then you should be used to it. That was a joke, I promise. Anyway, last time we left off here in Demon Tef, we completed a good portion of World 4. And after this, I already know that we have, like, I think one more level, and then it's the big boss fight with the twin dragons. So, yeah, that's exciting. But you know what else is exciting? The Thousand Year Door remake. Yeah, I'm not gonna lie, whenever they announced Thousand Year Door remake, part of me was just like, what are they gonna do? Are they gonna make it faithful, or are they gonna censor it? Though, four chapters in, and I can now happily tell you guys, that is not the case. They did not censor a damn thing. It is just as fun and crazy as you remember it. Now, with that being said, there have been some things that have been tweaked a little bit. And I honestly think it's for the better. It more was just like weird dialogue choices and stuff. Like, um, the Goomba's catcalling Goombella. That's now been changed to fit a little bit more with, like, what Roport folks talk like. So they were more just offended that we as heroes were down underground in their sewers. And then you beat the shit out of them and all is right with the world. Honestly, I kind of like that a little bit better. I mean, the Roport... Goombas are kind of douchebags to begin with, so them being super territorial, I think, makes a little bit more sense in the context of things. But uh, speaking of context and stuff, um, some things like um, how certain things are explained is a little bit different, like toward the beginning of the game. If you remember uh, The Legend of the Thousand Year Door, um... You'll remember that Goombella said a few of those lines, implying that uh, she knew a bit more than she let on, or whatever. Well, in the remake, it feels a bit more like she's learning along with us, which I kind of like a little bit more. Because it's frankly that actually says some of the lines. Uh, I forget exactly which one it is, but I know one line that Goombella initially said, which I found a little bit confusing that she said. Um, now Professor Frankly is the one that says it. And I, I like that change. I think it works. Also, uh, Professor Frankly still looks like Morgan Freeman. I'm, I'm sorry. Just for some reason, he always reminded me of Morgan Freeman. So half the time, I just call him Morgan Freegoom. And honestly, I'll probably be doing so throughout the majority of the Let's Play. <clears throat> Which, y'all won't have to wait too long, don't you worry. We only, we only have a few videos left of this Let's Play, and then like, two short games, and then we're right into the Thousand Year Door. So, I, I can't wait, guys. I really can't. They... Mm, oh god, I want to talk about Vivian so bad. Vivian was probably the thing I was the most worried about because of the political climate nowadays. <clears throat> but I am happy to say they actually went back into the English localization and made it far more faithful to the Japanese localization. And that's as far as I'm going to talk about it. Other than I am so happy they did it. So, um, win for the trans community. There you go. Also, fuck Beldum. It, it just makes Beldum even more of an asshole than she already was in the English localization. Like, she was a fucking asshole in the Japanese localization. So, um, hug Vivian and, uh, fuck Beldum. Although it makes me wonder, like, what's Marilyn's thoughts on all this? Like, was she trying to be a bit of an asshole, or was she just kind of going along with it because 
she was scared of Beldum. And honestly, with this current translation or whatever, it kind of implies the latter, that Marilyn was pretty scared about it. But anyway. Um, one of the things I did actually kind of find a bit funnier is, um... Unlike the original localization here in the United States for 2004, um, the way Beldum kind of introduces the Shadow Sirens is they're now just the three shadows. Relation withheld. <laughs> Something about that's even funnier. Like, I don't know why, it just... A, it makes Beldum seem like much more of an asshole. Like, she doesn't even consider like Vivian and Marilyn her family so it's just like it's not just Vivian getting the shit into the sick although it does seem like she gets the worst of it it seems like Marilyn gets some of it too so damn like poor Marilyn I want to hug her I just I want to hug Vivian and Marilyn and give them all my love and protect them and then throw build them into a trash can because Fuck Beldum. She sucks. She sucks even more now that she's much more like her original Japanese counterpart. Blech. Fuck Beldum. This is a very interesting NPC. I like him. I like him a lot. Although, uh, speaking of NPCs that I like a lot, uh, Prince Mush apparently is actually getting a boss fight. He gets a boss fight, like, post-chapter 5. Which, I had heard that Prince Mush was going to get a boss fight in Chapter 5, but... Or, I knew he was going to get a boss fight post-Chapter 3. I didn't know that it was post-Chapter 5, which... I'm not sure why they did that. I honestly would have, like, post-Chapter 3 would be, like where I would have put the Prince Mush boss fight and like Rockhawk ends up like getting his shit kicked in by Mario again and then Prince Mush shows up as like a surprise boss fight which I think would have been a bit better that's how I would have personally handled it but uh he's not the only one that got a boss fight apparently a certain uh a certain blue mole is getting a boss fight at the bottom of the pit of a hundred trials post game. And after you apparently after you beat the shit out of Bone Tail, um a certain mole is getting a boss fight. And apparently he's pretty hard too. So yeah, that that was kind of out of nowhere. I knew Prince Mush was probably gonna get a boss fight. Like Honestly, I think I think Nintendo kind of owed it to us. Like, they kind of hinted that he was going to make a comeback. Though, honestly, I thought they were going to do it in the post-game or something. But, nope. He, he does, in fact, have a boss fight. And I can't wait to fight him. Yeah, as you can tell, I'm I'm trying to get some practice on the Thousand Year Door remake. That way I can get used to, like, some of its idiosyncrasies. Like, all the weird changes and stuff. Which, um, a lot of people were, like, throwing a hissy fit that it was 30 frames per second. You honestly don't notice. With a couple of exceptions. Like, there are some exceptions where you can kind of tell that the 30 frames per second is prominent. And that, to me, was more in the power bounce and the multi-bonk. Which I did find to be a little bit more difficult to do now that it's 30 frames per second because the timing, I would say, is a bit stricter. Um, which a lot of people were kind of reacting like it would make the game easier. I honestly think it makes it a little bit more difficult, if you ask me. Because now you're having to play with like half the frame rate and stuff, so... Um, the game devs definitely took into account that it was 30 frames per second so you're gonna have to be a bit um you're gonna have to be a bit more on your a game if you're wanting to use power bounce or multi bonk because the timing on it is a little bit stricter it's not quite what you're used to but other than that i honestly it, it doesn't really affect the gameplay that much 
if anything, if it means that we have a stable frame rate, along with beautiful graphics, I'm I'm perfectly fine with that. I honestly didn't have a problem with it running at 30 frames per second because, I mean, if you haven't noticed, the later Paper Mario games run at 30, so... I honestly don't care that much that it's 30. Then again, I'm not really much of a frame rate snob, like, at all. I'm not, like, 60 frames or bust. Um, I will say that now that I have played some games in 60 frames per second, I do notice it a bit more. <laughs> and I do notice that some games do play a little bit better at 60, but... To be honest, it really is a bit more overblown than it really is worth. And that 30 honestly works just fine for most games. Um, I will say, like, in terms of accuracy and stuff like that, um, higher frame rates do usually help out a bit more. But to me, they're not a deal breaker is what I'm saying. Like, I'm not sure if this game runs at 60 or 30, but... Um... <clears throat> or, I should say, I don't know what the Switch version does. I know for a fact that um, the Steam port does. Like, I know the Steam version runs at 60 frames per second, and it is noticeable. Um, honestly, I think that the Switch version does run at 30. Which, I don't know, maybe that was, like, part of my problem. I got used to playing the game at 60, and now that it's running at 30, I'm having a bit more of an issue. But honestly, it's not that noticeable. It really isn't. <laughs> and to be honest, I think that... I don't know. I don't know what I was going to say there. I feel this guy. I guess that's what I was going to say. I got distracted by that beautiful NPC. But anyway, I guess I can get off my soapbox or whatever about frame rates and stuff. It's like, get get the thousand year door. And to be honest, I'm, I, I'm so happy that thousand year door remake is doing so well. Like it is, it has actually been a bestseller for the last few days and that really does show me that people have been craving to play the thousand year door and whether it's just like through osmosis through the internet or whatever i'm just happy that it's now widely available yet yet it, excuse me i got a hiccup there <laughs> i'm just glad that it's widely available to everybody again and that it's not stranded on the gamecube which, to be fair, I mean, the, I'm not saying that the GameCube version is bad by any means. It isn't. It's just that once you once you go Switch, you don't go back, let me tell you. I'm just glad that more people are able to play this game now. It makes me happy. Because it, it's such a wonderful game. And considering the high numbers that it's selling right now... I think that's probably going to tell Nintendo that we really, really do want games more like the Thousand Year Door. I'm just saying. I mean, the more we, more copies we buy of Thousand Year Door, that's a better chance that we're going to get a full-on, proper, third Thousand Year Door style entry. But with, like, little Origami King tweaks and stuff like that. Like, honestly, I think if they, like, combine the wide open spaces and s improvement from Origami King with, like, all the improvements of the Thousand Year Door remake, we are going to get a fucking great game next time they do Thousand... Next time they do Paper Mario. So, here's kind of what I want. I want the graphical style of the Thousand Year Door remake with some of the wide open areas and stuff of Origami King. Along with just, like, some of the fun, like, 
papery stuff of Origami King. But with the story of Super. Like, get the story prowess of Super Paper Mario, the improvements to the battle system of the Thousand Year Door remake, along with the weirdness, and the graphical and the graphical style of both Thousand Year Door Remake and Origami King, and we will have the perfect Paper Mario game. Though I'm, I'm going to be very curious to see what they do next. Like, what is going to be, like, the next set of partners and stuff? Personally, I think it'd be really cool if, like, we got some enemies that we just don't see that often, or... Hell, if we got multiple playable characters again, like in Super, I think that'd be really cool. Like, um, honestly, I'd love to see, like, some of the races introduced in, um, Super Mario Odyssey get incorporated into the next Paper Mario game. Like, maybe have a Toasterinian as a party member. I think that'd be really fun. Maybe a, um, a Bonitoner as your, as your Goombella type companion. I don't know. But those are just my thoughts. I would like to hear what your thoughts are in the comments. And be nice. Don't be a beldum. Anyway, next time on Demon Turf. Um, we're going to finish up the rest of the stages and face off with the boss of this area, which is definitely one of the points of the game that surprised me the most. Bye.